Hello folks, I hope that you're having just an absolutely great and safe day today. Today we'll take a look and we're going to return to Lawrence Watt Evans. We're taking a look at his first novel that I'm going to be reviewing for you, The Cyborg and the Sorcerers. Um, I have done two short stories that he did. Uh, the first one is his Hugo winning short story, uh, Why I Left Harry's All Night Hamburger Stand. Uh, and then the second one was a sequel to that, uh, um, a, a, a Flying Saucer with Minnesota Plates. Uh, both of those are lighthearted, fun. Uh, interesting. Uh, he's a Hugo Award winner uh, and so forth. Um, and this is going to be a little bit of a sequel to a video I recorded for you two weeks ago for Tuesday um, called uh, The Flying Sorcerers uh, by David Garald uh, and Larry Niven. David Garald is of the Star Trek Writing Hall of Fame, if you will. He's in the um, uh, he did he wrote for the original series and wrote for example the trouble with tribbles uh he's also he also wrote for the animated series too which larry niven also wrote for too now i don't know if these two met up by writing for the star trek animated series and decided to pool their talents for this uh light-hearted flying sorcerers uh but in this uh novel uh both of these guys by the way have won hugo awards for their work um, it's interesting to see what their take is on a science fiction meets a, a, a wizard and they fight uh in this uh storyline and they are fighting starting from like 10 pages in all the way till the end <laughs> of the novel a few hundred pages into it uh and so forth uh, so you it's actually it's, it's fun it's breezy it's interesting i really enjoyed it that was from 1970 um and it's and what i but what i really wanted to do was to kind of dig into that a little bit more with the cyborg and the sorcerers because i actually like this novel more and it's interesting to compare how these three hugo award winners have each approached this science fiction uh, fights fantasy. Um, and in this case, we're gonna be on the world of Dent uh, and so forth. And I, and I really like the, the starting springboard for this storyline. So let's talk about it. Um, in this book, I uh, dropped the novel. That's all right, we'll just ignore it, keep going on. In this book, you have this issue that happens uh, with, uh, we're about 300 years after uh, a war between Earth and its colonized planets. Um, and what happened in that war that started about 300 years ago um, is, is that um, Earth's colonies refused to give it the tribute that it needed to continue to survive economically. So it began to wait, so it opened war against its co colonies, which then joined uh, forces uh, to fight against Earth. Um, our main character, uh, Slant, he is a cyborg that was sent from Earth on these scout ships uh, and was being sent to colonies that were in, in the database. Uh, and then he was going to spy on those colonies. And his specific um, job as, as a cyborg was to remove their ability to uh, fight against um, the uh, uh, using subterfuge uh, as, as a spy, if you will, using he has nuclear bombs on his on his on his ship uh, and so forth on, on his on his star starship, um, but to remove move their ability to use and to fight against uh, the the Earth. Um, but the problem is, is that about a few years after he was sent out on his mission, um, Earth loses and uh, the colonies win. Um, so he's been fighting this war for about 300 years now. Um, he's only about 14 years into his career. Um, the time goes faster due to the time dilation from, from light years. So while he's only 33, um, it's been 300 years since the, since, what, since the war and what the people on this colony that he's gonna to arrive to on the planet Dent uh, refer to as the bad times and so forth. Um, now while uh, his, his um, uh, Starship uh, has a, uh, a log here of, of this being an old colony planet, so they come to the system to check it out. Uh, but when it arrives, it wants, to, it wants to search the planet because it is recording this unusual radiation signature uh, of a type of radiation that it does not have on its uh, uh, database. It's, it's a brand new type of radiation. So they're going to land on this planet. The, the cyborg and its computer are going to land on this, on this planet and investigate uh, the radiations uh, that they're getting. It's, it's, it's in a gravitic field. Um, he thinks the computer thinks that it might be uh, w weapons based or, or high level of weapons research. So, so they're going to land on the planet. Of course, they're going to find out that it's hint, hint, it's magic <laughs> and so forth. And so our main character slams the cyborg. Uh, well, try to try to deal with that. Now, I want to read to you the tagline because the tagline here is, I think, hilarious and gives you sort of the idea of what the story is trying to do. Are, are you ready? Here we go. The cyborg just wanted to live. The robot just wanted to die. The apprentice just wanted to be a sorcerer. And there you are, your three main characters. <laughs> a cyborg, a robot, and an apprentice. And so there you are. Uh, you get the basic idea. It's, 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 it's a typical sort of traditional sort of post-apocalyptic fantasy world um, rather than a, a traditional high fantasy world. Um, uh, and post-apocalyptic fantasy used to be really big in the genre. I used to see it in things like... Um, 
uh, Empire of the East by Fred Saberhagen. You saw it in uh, the Hawk Moon series by Michael Moorcock. Uh, and so forth. So this is in that sort of post-apocalyptic fantasy uh, where the apocalyptic event happened with nuclear missiles and so forth. Um, and instead of the world being uh, warped into a science fiction sort of post-apocalyptic style, it's been warped into a fantasy style and now magic exists or psychic powers exist uh, like, like here's Journey. Um, and monsters have, mut have mutated from, from this and so forth. And so it's more like Gamma World and less like, uh, you know, um, uh, like, like the RPG, uh, and less like uh, a sort of a traditional sort of a science fiction sort of extrapolation of what it would be like uh, after uh, a nuclear uh, event occurs. So it's it's that sort of crazy, everything's going to mutate, everything's, you got psychic powers, magic powers, magic's here, dragons are flying around, they're attacking us, right, and so forth. Um, and it's, it's, it's more like that than it is a traditional high-level fantasy. So if you enjoy post-apocalyptic fantasy or a different take on fantasy because you haven't read it that much, it, it's, it's enjoyable from that angle uh, and so forth. Also, the main character is, is very interesting. You won't typically read a cyborg on a fantasy world uh, with magic and so forth. That's kind of interesting. Um, I do like Slant as a character better than I like either of the two characters from the Flying Sorcerers, our, our two sorcerers from, 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 from that. Uh, so, so I do like that a little bit more. Um, and I like the central setup idea too. The idea of a cyborg that is hundreds of years past his prime uh, uh, but and, and the war was long, says lost <laughs> hundreds of years ago, but you have to continue on because the programming never said, you know, had a shutdown code, right? So you just have to keep on going. Uh, you keep on living your life. Uh, and so forth. I do like that sort of central idea too. Um, and so I, I like the sort of central ideas with this more. I think it's a stronger novel as a result uh, by Lawrence Watt Evans, The Cyborg and the Sorcerers. So there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read The Cyborg and the Sorcerers or anything else by Lawrence Watt Evans? What did you think of it? Um, there's also a sequel to it. It's called The Wizard and the War Machine. Um, basically in this, our main character is going to be uh, staying on planet. Um, and he's going to be fighting an, an invasion uh, and so forth. Uh, and so you'll, you'll see him he's, in this one. He's defending himself. Uh, and so this is the, uh, the Wizard and the War Machine, which is a sequel to Cyborg and the Sorcerers uh, for you. But have you read it? What do you think of it? Or anything else by Lawrence Watt Evans? Just let me know. Uh, if you like this video, please feel encouraged to hit that subscribe button. Because there's going to be so many more of these to follow in science fiction, fantasy, and, and horror. And sometimes when they meet, like science and fantasy. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and investing in my video. We all have so many things happening in our lives, right? So the fact that you spent this time with me is so humbling, and I really do appreciate that. So thanks again, and have an absolutely great day today.